Everyone know my hi mai ki whare kare ki a rutana or hato paura. Uh, welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. It's lovely to uh, welcome you to this beautiful place, which is Stano's uh, church home. Thank you all so much for coming along to express your love and your support for Stano's family. I've been observing the amazing love as people have walked into this place and greeted you, um, Mayor and Toronto and Alan. Um, it's beautiful. Keep that love going. That's what we're here to do, is to love and to support you as, as family. We're also here to give thanks to God for his gift of life to Svano and for his gift of her to us. Um, a special uh, meeting to you, um, Alan, uh, Dave and Mayor and, and your daughters. I'll thank two of them. Lovely to meet these two little ones the other day. And Trond and Bridget and Siggy will be watching this uh, on video from the USA. Kia ora to you as well. My hope is that you feel a deep sense of uh, love through the people that are gathered here around you today. And that through us and through what happens here this morning, uh, you also know the deep love of God for you all. My name is Mark Whitfield. I'm the Bishop of the Lutheran Church of New Zealand, but not for much longer. They're, they're sacking me after 12 years, <laughs> giving me a new job. I'm about to become the pastor here at St. Paul's at the end of the year. I love the church full every Sunday, so you're all very welcome to come back. This is a very friendly place. Um, I've shared some of uh, the journey of Smarno's life over recent months, so it's a real privilege uh, to be invited to lead you in this worship this morning. And I invite you to join in as much as you can. Um, we're going to sing. There'll be prayers that you can join in. There are liturgical responses. Just, you can just give everything a go. That's, that's wonderful. And then join us for a couple in a time of fellowship um, afterwards. In order to begin, I'm going to move to the baptismal font as we remember our baptism. In holy baptism, Stano was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul comforts us with these words. Don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we pray. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth and giver of life, we give thanks for all the mercies you granted Svano during her earthly life especially for calling her to faith in Jesus Christ through holy baptism. Comfort all who mourn her death with the hope of the glorious resurrection of the body and a happy reunion in heaven. Remind us that we too are mortal and prepare us to fall asleep in faith and on the last day receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, even Jesus Christ our Lord. He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to sing the first song. Now, all the songs today were chosen by Svana. We'll stand to sing.
pray. Eternal God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, as you raised your dear Son from the grave, keep us always faithful to him, so that not even death itself will snatch us out of your hand or separate us from your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Trump is going to share the first reading. Thank you. Um, um, this reading is from Psalm 139, verses 112. It was requested by Simon Sidney. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, do you know it completely? You hem me in behind the wall and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain. Where can I go from the Spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and set it at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, the light around me will cover me. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, the darkness is as light to you. This is the word of the Lord. Our Saviour Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brings immortal life through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through Savannah. Now I'm going to invite our family members to offer their tributes and then I'll have something else to invite them. Um, I haven't met you yet, my name's Maya, I'm Father's daughter. I am grateful to have had a mother who I've always known has loved me unconditionally. And I think, oh, my daughter's who have known that they've always been deeply loved by their Lord. And I think, gosh, what a, what a secure place to launch into the world from. Um, I'm, I'm well aware that my mum gave up a lot in moving to New Zealand. I know it wasn't easy. I uh, wrestling with the challenges of being an immigrant. I live in far from home. I'm so grateful that she worked hard to maintain Norwegian culture in our home and Great to see many of the members of the Scandinavian Club here. Got so many happy memories of celebrations of Yule and sometimes and um, the food, mostly the food. <laughs> um, I know that I have been instilled many good Norwegian values uh, that have saved uh, the value of insulation in a home, of how to stack firewood properly, of uh, wearing good rain clothes. And actually, one of my earliest memories with my mum was uh, I think we walked from to school. In the schoolyard, there was a kind of dip and a massive puddle on the floor. And all the other children were being rushed in their classrooms by their parents. And my mum and I were dressed in our Norwegian brain clothes, which we had got for a long way. And I was allowed to jump in the puddles. And I remember thinking, oh, I have the coolest mum, who was also very well organised. Um, I love that we have good every Sunday. At Christmas, we always have finished. I have so many happy memories of a happy Papa. Uh, every year she would say that the dough was never quite as good as it should be. And I noticed the same phrases coming out of my mouth when I make the park, which is gingery, uh, with my children. I'm saying, the dough, I've worked the dough, stay simplicity together, don't eat so much more dough, you can upset tummy. Um, for the record, I don't think no one has ever got an upset tummy from eating too much of the dough, but every year she would say it. Uh, as a child, we had so many good times just making stuff and sticking and creating and she'd bring out those brass split pins and we're like, oh, we're going to make some magic. So, so much fun. She was an immensely talented woman um, with her crafting skills. All the things, spinning and um, weaving and knitting and crochet and embroidery and sewing and I can look around her house and even around my house and see uh, a million handmade things. Um, 
So many skills, which stood her in my dad well in lean years. Uh, her resourcefulness, her thriftiness. Uh, I think all the clothes that she made for us as kids, uh, some of them cooler than others. Um, I had a particularly cool matching tassel on track search, um, pink and green, which has strangely came back into fashion and got me here and yesterday from my office in book. Um, she was still knitting our socks, all those socks to wear, um, which have been a defining feature of visitors to our home, noticing my husband and I in our socks and now looking for a new supplier. Um, I think of the hundreds of jars of stewed fruit which we have consumed. I had to do it myself this year, and I just froze everything. We didn't even bother putting them. And I say that the hours and hours of service that she had to us. I think particularly, she told me once about how when she was little, when she started school, as a left-handed person, um, her father had to intervene with the school board that she would be allowed to write with her left hand. And I know she often thought of herself as um, slightly awkward um, in that way, but she would often tell me of her absolute delight when she had had the opportunity to teach someone who was left-handed how to crochet the left-handed way. And um, I think that really speaks to the way that being a teacher is so core to who she was. Uh, obviously as a school teacher for many years in her occupation, but it was her whole way of being. Um, it wasn't uncommon for a dinner time conversation to end up with mum going and getting the encyclopedia from the bookshelves before Google and um, bring it to the table to check out about something. I think her commitment to being a lifelong learner and to education uh, is revealed in the fact that two out of her two children have got PhDs. Um, but in my experience, it was never about setting and, or reaching a certain academic standard. It was just about doing your best with whatever you had available to you. Um, and I think she, she carried that um, so much. She always believed that everyone had an ability to learn, that no one was ever a lost cause, whatever life had thrown their way. Um, from illiterate adults that she taught to read to spell students to her many years in hospital schools, uh, particularly at the Child and Family Inpatient Unit at Princess Niagara Hospital, where she would uh, take a child who, in very difficult circumstances, who believed that maths was something they could never do, and who would patient, with patient attentiveness, that kid would come out the other side discovering that actually they could do maths, and they actually rather enjoyed it. And it was often a massive boost to their self-confidence and their belief in their ability to succeed in the world. And that's something I so valued about who she was. Um, she was always keen to learn new things and she inspired that love of learning in us. She would read and read and read. She loved a bit of puzzle. Um, crosswords and nos that were eventually eclipsed by Sudoku. Um, and I just thank God how she continually supported us in our interests many, many hours she spent as taxi mum, and that's continued when my own children came along. She would often come and babysit and let me leave these little people with her, sometimes for weeks on end. I think at our peak we'd been away for almost three weeks. Uh, and she would just handle it. You'd come back to her, oh, someone had a double ear infection, and she just wouldn't tell you, because she was, she was handling it. I think of the thousands of books that she's read to my children. I love the way that she, while she was usually a quiet supporter, when it was required, she was a fierce protector and a powerful advocate, particularly for people uh, who were on the margins. And um, I just think that's so Jesus, who she was. I personally am really grateful for her commitment to church and to faith. It's provided me incredible grounding. Um, I remember the moment where I was standing when I told her that um, I was definitely going to turn down that place in medical school because I wanted to be a pastor. And I know it was a really difficult moment for her. But um, she continued to support me and supported David and their ministry for many years. And as I spent a lot of time with her at the end of her life, she was consistently confident in her eternal hope. Uh, she was at, at no point distressed. She was very secure in her faith. She was looking forward to uh, seeing her parents and her older sister. And um, I suspect she's been probably having some strong words with the Lord about how long it took at the end. Uh, she always like to express her opinion on things. Um, but she's always been confident in her faith. And I'm deeply comforted by knowing that she rests um, in the arms of her father.
when my mother-in-law to be heard that we brought up. I'm seeing some of what I'm serious. The first thing to do was to get an atlas and see where this place or New Zealand was. It must have seemed so far away. <coughs> Sana was a school teacher. Her two sisters were also school teachers, and both were married to school teachers. So I was the odd one out, <laughs> working as a welder at the time. However, in less than a year after arriving back to New Zealand, I was at training college preparing to be a technical teacher myself. So I first had a term as relieving with a special class at Kaiapoi School. Soon after, she had a full year at Tiruru Girls High School. In Christchurch, she trained as a spelling teacher. And when one of her friends who had better, expressed a desire to do the same, if only if she could afford it. No trouble. Sano sent her to lend her the required $600. That friend not only qualified, but later became a full time teacher of the dog. It was as a special needs teacher that Samuel found her niche. She worked at her hospital when the burns and spiral units were both placed there. If there were any children in need of help, she sometimes looked around the general wards. My man to help was down to the North Island with a spine injury. He knew he could not return to his usual labouring work, but thought he had a chance of being a truck driver if he could get his driver's license. First, he needed to be able to read properly. Here, Sano stepped up to lend him her copy of the road code and help him understand it. Months later, when he visited Bird again, he found him reading a paperback. Then she tried to hide the book, embarrassed by its content. She told him the important thing was that he was reading. Another man from a Christchurch family she knew also received help to read. His wife later commented that the only draw that was she had to share the morning newspaper with him. She later transferred to the child and family unit and then moved with that to Princess Margaret Hospital. To travel to New Zealand, Sano made a lot of sacrifices. She largely gave up her family and friends, her language and her culture. Moreover, because she had an unusual name that was difficult to pronounce, she almost gave up her identity. It is to my regret that I was not able to teach my parents how to pronounce her name properly. Sano later said that with the arrival of our two children, Maya and John, and subsequently our five grandchildren, it was all worth it. Thank you. I have some words of tribute from Mum's um, younger sister, Eve. Um, they are, of course, in Hawaii. Leaf says, there are many words that could be used to describe my sister Svana. She was compassionate, determined, and fair. She knew the word no, but she seldom used it when asked to give of her time or share her skills. She was devoted to her family and friends and to her work. We spent 13 of our childhood years together. After that, we went separate ways as we attended different schools and stayed at different places because of that. As children, we also had our separate friends and activities, and she was always there for me when I needed her. And having spent the last week going through mum's photos and finding all these wonderful pictures of her. At various ages through ranging from the top of the we're not showing anymore of her, to the up in the yard with her Newton flag, all the way through to uh, a photo from Christmas 1965 with her two sisters, her mother and father, dressed in their, their, their brunettes, their Norwegian finest, um, you know, they 
altogether amazing film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd be a chance, more chance to get to know Continuing from Lee, though, as adults, we have spent little time together, naturally, since we have lived on the sort of society we live. But when we met, it was like we did not get apart at all. There is a special bond between siblings. When she met Alan, we all knew it meant that she would live far away from us. But Alan, you became our brother, and you and Trond, Maya, and their families will always be our family. It is hard for me to say goodbye to my sister, especially as I could not be there for her at the end. But she will always be in my heart. I and my family have sent all of our love to Alan, Trond, and Maya, and their families. Until we meet again, their sister, rest in peace. I have a few notes for myself that I want to make. Um, I think we made a wonderful job of sort of capturing the little stories and things about who Mum was. Um, I want to talk a little bit about a few things that Mum taught me. Um, this is a rough grab bag of things that sort of struck me over the last few days as being things I've learned from her. The first one was a love for music. Um, the music you heard when you came in was one of the many, many collections of Coral hymns um, and the like that whenever we came home we'd always be playing something like that or like that or Bach or Telemann or something or other. Um, my mother didn't think of taking an eight year old to a chamber music performance. It wasn't usual, so I have memories of uh, sitting in the, in the cathedral listening to people playing um, the concertos and the like and, and being steeped in that. Until so I was really 11 or 12, I don't think I really encountered pop music in my life. For me, my musical diet was, was uh, of course, the last three or narrow was the, the, the song that she, she uh, was willing to play, even though I mainly jumped on the couch. Um, <laughs> um, and musical theatre, we even had the opera was released on, on tape. She got that and um, we heard that all the time. So she had, she had a tremendous love for music. She, she encouraged both me and Maya to take up instruments. Violin when I was in primary school. Um, what was your first? You were a recorder, recorder, and then clarinet, and many other things. Back to the recorder. And one thing Mum always used to tell us, uh, I'm sure this had more of a landing on my though, was, was you know, yes, you need to be, you need to practice. If you don't practice, you regret it. Uh, if you stop playing, you'll regret it. And thanks, Mum, you were right, I know. But <laughs> I, I stopped when I was about 12 or 13 because I was overwhelmed with other things. Another thing she, um, talk performance, and this is not necessarily the most, uh, most uh, virtuous of things, but was it was a love for small, pleasant things like food. So uh, we would always have a little bit of some cheese in the, in the, in the, in the fridge. Um, I don't know if this was mum or pop, but we would always have pepper in the fridge, in particular it would be for cooks, but then a little bit. Um, but there's all these little, little, little flavours that you wouldn't normally introduce children to, that she liked to, to, to get us to eat. Uh, it may have been partly a aspect of getting us to appreciate um, the culture that we were growing up in, so it was a lot of Norwegian um, food and the like, but I really appreciated that, and that's become a, a huge part of who I am. I, I cook a lot as a result. Um, may I mention mum's thrift and care? Um, this is something that I, it's one of those things that is small and not obviously, it's not big and obvious about someone, but she, she was always very careful about how we use resources. And so. As an example of this, whenever my wife Bridget is uh, chopping onions, uh, she doesn't chop the entire onion to the extent that I would have been happy with. And I cannot see this without a little pang of sort of, oh, I'm going to do it right now, it's in my book, tell us off. <laughs> uh, but but that's, that's, a, that's a humorous story, but the, the, the central idea of being satisfied with what you have and doing the best that you can with what you have. Another example, um, in the last few days, digging around the house looking for photos, I found three large boxes of Clippings from Nos Uba, which is the Norwegian magazine that she used to receive uh, a, a shipment rolled up, a big roll about 10 issues a year's worth of them rolled up like this every every Christmas from her, from her sister. Um, and she, she would trim out um, pictures that she liked them. And there wouldn't necessarily be pictures of anything important, but it's like, oh, that's a nice flower, oh, that's a nice background. And then she would cut these up and she would plaster all the waiting boxes with them to make containers to store educational materials or um, medication or really everything. So if you, if you look around that house still, there are many of these boxes that she made 30 years ago. And there's many other examples of using off cuts or just doing the best with, with what's there. So that was something that um, 
she, she taught us a lot. Another aspect, um, my own mentioned mum being the taxi mum a lot, and she definitely drove us around a lot, but she, she would never give us one of these free trips without a small moral lesson about independence. Um, so <laughs> mum would always tell me, well, it's, 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 it's great that I can help you do this thing, but you've got to move to be independent. If you're not independent, you're going to have problems later. Um, and that, at the time, I was like, oh, mum, yeah, okay, sure, whatever, thanks for picking out, but you know, that's what you do with your kid, and you don't take these things seriously. But I recognise that, that that taught me to stop and think a little bit more before asking for help on things. Not so, not so far that I don't ask for help, but that I am, I like to be certain that before I ask for help, I have done everything I could such that I can justify it to mum. By which I mean, if I actually eventually had to call her to pick me up, I could at least say, yeah, but I've already tried this, this, and this, and so you were my last resort. I'm sorry I didn't mean to you. But that, 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 that has helped me immensely. Um, so thank you so much for that um, um, Two other things that I want to mention. The, 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 the second class one is, this is something also um, that pops out for me, is a immensely strong connection and interest in our heritage. Um, obviously, with mum having been an immigrant um, from Norway, um, there was a lot that we learned from her part of that she would always faithfully reproduce the best possible winter Norwegian Christmas that one could create on a summary uh, winter set the day here in the Christchurch when everyone else is at a barbecue. So we would dress up, uh, at least we would be dress up in relatively warm clothes, we would eat hot food um, and it would be wonderful. Uh, and then the next day, Christmas day, we would go out and have a barbecue with friends. So it was a, there was a lot of those sorts of things. But then there was also the deeper heritage. Um, Things like uh, genealogy and uh, connections to language. Um, Mum, I think, taught us both a very strong love for language and uh, love for sort of being able to communicate in different ways. Um, I had the privilege of not really speaking English until I was about four or five when I went to kindergarten, because before that I spoke mostly Norwegian at home. And um, they say that you know, teaching children to be bilingual at that age is um, great and it's, it certainly it's helped me to, to, to love language. And because my father's also helped us with this heritage thing, he, he's a strong interest in his, his uh, Swedish heritage. Our last name, Nilsson, is, um, is actually from Sweden, but it's spelled in a Norwegian way because the piece of Sweden that's from, very close to Norway. Um, but I learned recently that the, the reason he went to, uh, to Norway and Sweden um, in the first place was because he was going there to try and track down some family um, back in the late 60s. And that's how he ended up eventually in Christian Sun. Saw this young woman in the park that he was walking one day and they had a conversation. They started dating, and um, that's the, the rest of being there is history. <laughs> so, many, many yeah. great things that I learned from mum, um, and <coughs> which I'm very, very grateful. And so, in practicing that last virtue of gratitude, which I she also taught us greatly, um, I want to thank a lot of people, just I mean, obviously everyone here for, for being here, Bishop Mark, for helping put together the service. And, Making the space available. Um, may I? May I do a walk through this? From sitting vigil um, with mum when her condition started to go downhill back in late January um, to supporting mum with all sorts of things through the last couple of months um, and to helping organise so much of. I think I'll leave it here. Um, thank you for everything, Mum. Thank you. Thank you very much for those beautiful tributes. Now I'm going to invite uh, Ahi Allen. Ahi is a member of St. Paul's here, and he wishes to speak and also to sing well.
um, thank you for the pleasure of being able to speak today. And uh, I'm speaking mainly to say just a big thank you to uh, Solano, another pillar of St. Paul's Christchurch, um, a woman who um, we relied on and she worked very well and uh, uh, so we're part of her um, church family community and uh, we just, uh, I just want to uh, give my uh, sympathy and I'm sure from the rest of the congregation uh, that we have not lost yet another uh, valuable person. Uh, however, she's in the hands of God and she'll meet all the other saints who have gone before her, many of whom have worshipped here. Um, and so, Ellen, uh, to you and your greater family and your friends, we express our sympathy to you. And then, and uh, it's wonderful to hear uh, the speeches that have been made and giving us a uh, full background of this wonderful woman. Um, so, thank you for the opportunity. And my wife uh, today is Fakari uh, Amai. Fakari Amai is uh, really uh, a uh, loose translation of the, about the fifth verse of. Bible with me, um, and uh, it's look at my notes. <laughs> Basically, uh, it is show your cross to me. Let it shine there in darkness. To there I will be looking. In my in this, let me abide with thee. And those are beautiful words, and I love the song made popular, of course, by Uncle Howie. I call him Uncle Howie, Howie Morrison. Um, he's not my uncle, but he's part of my family. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I close with Fakaria uh, Mai. Thanks to our God through uh, God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord for our sister Spano. Philippa, I invite you forward to read the second reading. Thanks. Creation waits with eager 
longing for the revealing of the children of God, for the creation of the subject to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will set, be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown, in, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things, if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to contend. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Or hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand to sing Amazing Grace. <laughs>
grace and peace to you from God. Again, let me say how lovely it is to welcome you into this place, a place special to Svana, as we've heard. It's uh, good to have you um, here. Thanks for the opportunity also to um, lead in the service and to share a few words now. Um, I wish I had opportunity to know Svano better. Um, I've probably known her for at least 12 years, I think. But as you heard, I'm not the resident priest in this area yet. I soon will be. And um, I can't say I know her as well as probably uh, many of you do. Although in the last few months I've had the joy of visiting her. Um, once in your home, Alan, it was a lovely visit. I think it's the only time I was in the home that it was lovely to be there with Savannah and more recently at, uh, at Windsor Care. And I guess I've got to know her um, a little bit better through those visits. And I've got to say that even though I might have only got to know her a little bit, I absolutely love the little bit that I know um, about her. And I've learned so much more about who Svano was um, today from you all. So thanks all for sharing those, those beautiful tributes and memories of her. She was an elder at this church, and that perhaps suggests something about uh, what sort of a person she was. An elder in our, um, in our Lutheran tradition is generally someone who assists with the pastoral care needs of the church, so has that natural inclination of love and care for others, and we heard that very, very powerfully in your tributes. My understanding is that she also looked after the bookings for the outside user groups who came in to use the church, and that suggests to me a servant heart. She probably did the job that no one else wanted to do. So that was um, that says something about her too. She was a very beautiful person. The last visit I had with Svano was on Good Friday morning after I led worship here at St Paul's. I went straight there after worship. And our time together was spent gathered around the sacrament of Holy Communion. Something that is at the very heart of God's amazing love for his people, for us. The gift of his son Jesus, whose body was broken on the cross, his blood spilt on the cross. And we gathered around the central event and act of, of God's love that, it's the, that is at the very heart of the Christian faith at the very heart of life and faith in Jesus, his offering of himself on the cross for our eternal well-being. Svano's speech, as it was on my previous visit in, in March, was probably a little confused. Um, I suspect there was some Norwegian in there, but given that my Norwegian is not existent, as you know, um, I can't tell. Occasionally there was also the language of tears. I can do the language of tears I take as well. But even with that, what I loved was that Svano could join in with me um, in various things that we were going through that morning as we gathered around the, the sacrament of Holy Communion. The confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We could say that together. Uh, the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus had taught her. She could pray that with even the words of institution or consecration are technical terms here, let me explain. This is where we repeat the words that Jesus said when he gave Holy Communion for the first time and gave his body and blood. The rubrics book says that it's usually just the pastor that says these words. But I've often experienced with people who are dying that they, they love to join in with any words they can that they recognise from the liturgy here at worship and so Svano joined in with all those words with me that morning as well, and I wasn't going to stop her. I think it's an incredibly beautiful thing that she um, owned those things. All these things, you know, deeply embedded in Svano's uh, soul and memory, deep in here, the things of faith, the things concerning her relationship with Jesus. And here we were on Good Friday where Paul says, we preach and we proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power and the wisdom of God. And Svano had this deep awareness of the significance of this day. Christ, her power and wisdom. She knew what Jesus, her Saviour, had done for her on the cross that day. She knew. Svano knew these significant things of faith and life in Christ. Because God had established in her this relationship of knowing. 
It was God who created and heard this relationship that enables Sparno to know and to trust and to confess. Now you may have noticed this. Tron read uh, Psalm 139 earlier. There was a word sort of recurring in it bit of a theme uh, developing there. And that word and that developing theme is the one of knowing and being known. The psalm is full of God knowing stuff about us, knowing everything about us. When we lie down, when we get up, what we're going to say, and even when we try to flee his presence, when we try and hide, God has a knack of finding where we've hidden. There's, there's even more knowing in the psalm, and I just want to share a few more words just to impress upon us. This is just how much God knows us. Um, Psalm writer says, you know when I leave, when I get back, you know me inside and out, you know every bone in my body, you know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something, like an open book you watch me grow from conception to birth, all the stages of my life were spread out before you, the days of my life all prepared before I've even lived one day. I'm sure that Svano loved being known so well by God. Not just in her lying down and getting up and what she was going to say and all the days of her life, but even in her creation, in her formation as a living and a beautiful being. Some translations of the psalm talk, of us, talk about us being knit together in our mother's womb. You get a beautiful image here of God creating us in his love. I was thinking as I thought about those words, I loved watching my, my mother knit something beautiful, a jersey here, another jersey there, yet another jersey. And we we'll have heard this morning as far I love knitting socks. So, you know, there's just, there's just something beautiful about people who love knitting and creating something new. And um, for my mum, and obviously for Silvano, she, she loved giving these gifts of new creation away. And here we have this beautiful image of God uh, creating and knitting us together, things of beauty in his image, a gift that he gives uh, uh, us gives away to you and to me, the gift of life that he gave to Svano. I'm sure Svano loved being known by God, even loved God knowing those areas of her life where the frailty of her humanity would be laid bare. Now part of our humanity smarts at the thought of an all-knowing God being aware of our humanity, our failures, knowing our mess-ups, our weaknesses, knowing what the Bible calls sin. But God does know, and it's okay for him to know, because he has a beautiful and gentle way of dealing with our humanity. He doesn't crush us, but he deals with our failures with great compassion and abundant love. He wants to restore us. He deals with our sin with mercy and and grace and forgiveness. He knows we need help, that we need his love. He knows that we need Jesus. He knows that for all of us. And he knew that for Svana, and that's why he hemmed her in with his love, gave her Jesus as her saviour from sin, gave her the Holy Spirit to whisper the song of the gospel, the good news, into her ears and onto her heart throughout all of her life. The Holy Spirit that whispered at her baptism, you are mine, you belong to Jesus. All this knowing and being known by God, beautifully expressed in the psalm that we heard, points to the most beautiful knowing that we can ever experience, and that is being known in Jesus. So I'm going to let Jesus speak to you, to us now. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. But wonderful words from Jesus. Words of promise. Words that give hope and comfort. Words that gave hope to Svana throughout her life. Words that offer hope to all of us now. Jesus knew Svana and in that beautiful lifelong relationship of knowing, Svano knew Jesus back. She heard his voice, she recognised it, she knew it and trusted it. I started by saying that I didn't know Svano that well, as well as I would have liked, and maybe some of you were thinking, I wish we'd known Svano a little bit better too. Okay, that's the way it is. The most important thing is 
that she was known by God and dearly loved in Jesus. And an incredible lovely thing for her and for us to know is that even in her dying, Jesus who knew her, who loved her, was close to her. Because nothing was going to separate her and nothing will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Now she is known by God in a new way, loved by Jesus, gathered into his arms and carried close to his heart for all eternity. And we thank and praise God for this. Amen. The peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The word of Christ dwell in us richly. Amen. church of heaven and earth, your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant that all who have been baptised into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give to the family of sorrow and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Help us, when we are perplexed and troubled, to believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Be with us in our journey through life, and teach us to live wisely, making the most of our time on earth. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, prepare us all for the world to come. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and take us home to your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We stand to sing. Christmas, what's known as the Christmas blessing, may the big part of the
servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to light the Gentiles, and the glory of your people in Israel. The God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you by the blood of the eternal covenant with everything good, so that you may do his will, working in you what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We're going to sit and listen to some beautiful music now and then we're going to move through to our concert.